new. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. To start off, I start off with these canisters that I got from a yard sale. If you guys have not seen my uh, thrift haul, then I will link it in the cards in the right hand corner and you can probably go over and watch that real quick and then um, watch this if you like. But I do insert before pictures after. Of course, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm not used to doing thrift flips very much, so I always forget to take before pictures. So I did have to go back to my video and like screenshot them, but I'll know for next time. Anyway, I got these from a yard sale. Um, they stunk pretty bad and I hated these little, I don't know, embellishments on the front. So I just took my heat gun and they were, I guess like a clay or like a weird plastic. So I basically just heated them up and then took my putty knife and I just kind of went around the edge and then popped those off and then scraped off the excess of the little plastic embellishment or whatever it is on the front. I then gave everything a really, um, I was going to say really good, but that's a lie. <laughs> I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And because this had a really funny smell, like if you guys go to Goodwill or any thrift stores, it has that very distinctive smell. I'm really funny about smells, you guys. So I did give everything a coat as well as like the insides of the canisters as well as the bottom and the bottom of the part that the canisters go into and um like i said i give it a distress coat just because i like the way that it looks kind of weathered and old which is my style if you don't like that you can always give it a good coat maybe even a second coat if you need to but i only had to give it one distress coat Next, I go in with my little mini chip brush and some antique wax by Waverly, and I just distress all the edges of the canisters, the lids, as well as the part that holds the canisters. Now for the canisters, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and originally I was just going to take this farmhouse style, um, this farmhouse tile chalk couture transfer um, that I get from my website, and I was just going to do the middle one, this pretty design, and I like to cut my transfers up if they're really big. So this one is an 18 by 18. So I just cut it into three. So I left one longer and then two, uh, I like cut another longer piece. So basically I cut it in half and then cut one of them in half is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's just much easier to work with that way if you're not doing one big piece. And I had an extra one so I wasn't really worried about it. Um, but I did cut that up to make it easier. I fuzzed it and then I transferred that on with my black paste. Next I like I said, I was just going to do that one. And then I figured that it would be cool to do different designs on each. And I slowed this down because I wanted to show you guys how beautiful this comes out once you pull that transfer back. It's as easy as that and anybody can do it. And that's what I love most about Chalk Couture. 
So I did the first one in the farmhouse tile. I did the second one in that pretty little design. And then you guys, I don't really know what to call these other two. So the second one was kind of like greenery. And then the third one kind of looked like another tile pattern. Um, but I will leave all the products that I used in the description box below. So once I had all three of my canisters um, chalked up, then I do take some jute and some hot glue. And uh, for the first and the last one, I wrap jute around the top about four to five times. And then the middle one, I wrap jute at the bottom. And then once I have it wrapped, then I secure it in the back with some hot glue once again. Next, I take these chalkboard wood stakes from Dollar Tree and I just pull those off of the stakes. I pulled two of them originally, um, but, or actually I pulled three of them. Originally, I was only gonna use two and then I do end up using three. But anyway, I got these beautiful stickers from Dollar Tree. I got them off of the Dollar Tree D-Stash group on Facebook and, um, stay tuned for a little surprise here in a little bit i will share something you guys aren't going to want to miss but i do take a chicken and a cow they're from different sticker sets and i um, put them onto the little chalkboards but i realized that the cow didn't look like the chicken um you probably can't tell from this angle but up close it was bothering me um, so I did just take a cow from the exact same sticker set and put that on the other little mini chalkboard and then I glue them down to the middle of the first and the last canister for the middle canister I take this little mini wreath that I believe I got from Hobby Lobby and some greenery that I got from Walmart and I just glue that greenery around the wreath So chalkador squeegees are not only good for um, chalking, I do use them a lot so that I don't, don't so that way I don't burn myself with hot glue. So make sure you don't burn yourself either, but I do just glue that wreath down to the middle of um, the middle canister. And then like I said, I ended up using the other chalkboard to uh, put a little milk carton from my stickers in the middle and I just stuck that in between the wreath and look how cute this turned out you guys I love it so so much I wasn't really too sure at first when I was kind of putting it all together but now seeing it in the canister holder um, all done I, I just love it so so much and I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think especially Dollar Tree DIYs, farmhouse decor is my specialty, and much more. So I would love if you would stick around by clicking that red subscribe button, and then just tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. So each week on my channel, I show you guys my earrings of the week. My sweet subscriber Melissa sent me these, and I am so grateful to her. Look how gorgeous they are, you guys. She said that um, she saw a few pairs. She couldn't decide on one, so she bought me two. So thank you so much, Melissa. I appreciate it, and if you want to send me a pair of earrings to feature on the earrings of the week, my P.O. Box information is in the description box below, and I would love to share them with everybody. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Okay, friends, moving on to this washboard. You guys, I don't know, this might be my favorite one. I loved it even before I did it up, but I start off by taking the stickers off as well as the hooks or the buttons on the front of the hooks that were just glued on and then I just take my drill and I take the hooks off originally I thought that they were maybe that I thought that they maybe were just glued in um, but they were screwed in the back I'm sorry I trip over my words you guys um, my mind goes so quick that my mouth like 
can't catch up um so anyway it just is what it is um but i go in with my white waverly chalk paint and i give that top part two or three i believe i gave it three good coats of that chalk paint drying the coats in between because if they're not fully dried before you try to put on another coat the paint will just pull up the coat that you did before the one that you're doing so make sure that your coat is dry underneath before you go in with another coat so once i did the top part then i go in on the bottom part and this one only needed two good coats of white waverly chalk paint Next, I take my Endless Laundry Transfer. I always like to label my backer sheet, that way I know um, what goes with what. And then for the bigger transfers, you can't tell it, but this is a 12 by 18. So I like to lay that with the sticky side up and then fuzz it that way. Um, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. And you also saw that I, I got it stuck together. It happens, you guys. It's no big deal. You just slowly want to pull that apart and you'll be just fine. So I got this positioned right where I wanted it. Now, when I got this washboard, I literally had this transfer in mind. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it as soon as I picked this up, um, but I knew that only the laundry would fit. And so I just take my, I believe this is called um, transfer tape, I believe, don't quote me, but you can get it on my website. It's really, really cheap. And I just tape off those little lines and then I transfer on the word laundry as well as wash and dry and fluff. Once I had that transferred on, then I go in with the bigger part of my farmhouse tile that I was telling you about earlier and I transfer that on to the bottom. I then just use my quick dry tool that again I got from my website to dry my paste and then I went in with my distressing ink and my blending brush. You can get these in my Amazon store and all my links are in one place so in the description box if you click the title of this video a box will appear and then you will see a link tree um, link and it has all my links you can find every single one um, anything I ever talk about is in one place just to make it easier for you guys and then that way I don't have a zillion links in my description box but I do just take my distress ink and my blending brush and I just give I, I randomly do this there's no rhyme or reason but I just wanted this to look old and weathered and antique -y. so I do go along the edges and then randomly in the white spots. Next I take a bigger chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just distress the sides, the front, anywhere where you see that natural wood that I didn't touch. I did give it a light coating of distressing again to tie in and make it look old and weathered. Last but not least, I go in with my drill and the screws once again, and I attach those little handles or hooks, whatever you want to call them, back onto this sign. And you guys, I love this so much. It was so quick and easy to do. That's why I love Chalk Couture so much because the transferring part literally took me five minutes and the after or the way that it looks after I was done is stunning. You could probably sell this piece for 60 to 70 dollars. 
Okay, friends, so I'm gonna start doing small little giveaways every other week on my channel. Hopefully I can remember, but this is the new giveaway. It is gonna be one set, so all four of these to two winners. It ends July 9th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's really simple to enter. All you have to do is like this video, comment your favorite farm animal and your favorite project in this video, share it with someone who you think would enjoy this, and for an extra entry if you go to my link tree um, link in the description box and join my VIP group you will get an extra entry into this giveaway next is this little tray that i got i love this thing so much a few of you guys had let me know that i could get this at dollar general i got it at a yard sale for three dollars a lady bought it for her sister her sister didn't want it so i was like yes i want it for three dollars and they're saying that in the store it's five dollars so i definitely got a good deal but this one is super duper easy originally i was thinking that i would chalk on this but i wanted to make it really really simple and easy for everybody to do so I do just um, lay this lay the tray on a piece of foam board measure it out cut it out with my utility knife and then I take a piece of scrapbook paper and I again lay down the um, foam piece of foam board and then I measure it out and cut it out now I'm not very good at cutting, you guys. I cannot cut straight to save my life. So I knew that possibly the white could show through. So I do just take some truffle Waverly chalk paint and I put a coat around the edges as well as the edge of the top. Um, I didn't worry about painting the entire thing, but I just didn't want any of that white to show through. And then once that was dry, then I take my glue stick and I, I, glue right onto whatever I'm doing so I don't like glue the scrapbook paper I just glue the foam board um, that's just much easier for me but if it's easier for you to glue the scrapbook paper then that is your preference but um, once I had the glue laid down then I just lay down the scrapbook paper smooth it out make sure none of the um, glue is on the sides of it and then I place that right into my tray Last but not least, I take some jute just to dress up the edges of this and I put a dab of hot glue on the back and then because this is metal, um, the jute wanted to keep sliding. So I did just put a bead of hot glue every so often to keep it in place and I did have to do that for the first two um, like go arounds I guess you can call it and then once I had the first two then I could just wrap it um, without gluing it and then once I was done obviously I um, I believe I did like five uh, wraps around and then I just glued it in the back and I love the way this turned out you guys um, I'm my style is changing a little bit um, normally I would go for like a lighter wood but I'm kind of into the darker woods right now so you can let me know in the comments down below if you would choose a lighter wood scrapbook paper or a darker wood moving on to this little shelf I love it so much but this was like a cherry wood and I don't like that it's not my style so I started by taking the little hooks off of the bottom and then you guys this leaf was a real pain to get off so not only was it glued um, it also was held on by like these little metal wires so I started off by taking my heat gun heating up that leaf I couldn't really get under it to heat it up so I just heated it from the top and then twisted it and realized that it was attached through the back so I just took my needle nose pliers and I also had to use my staple pull because one of them was pretty deep in there and just kind of lifted that up so that I could pull that leaf off now I did save this leaf because I can picture doing something with it for fall um, but there was still excess glue left over so I did take some goo gone that I get from Dollar Tree and a paper towel and I just try to remove the rest of that glue as best as possible obviously I'm not going to get all of it since this is kind of weaved um, but I do get as much off as I possibly can 
Next, I go in with a wet paper towel and I just kind of clean this up. If you guys buy anything from thrift stores or yard sales, you know that generally it's all dusty. People probably leave it in a pile forever until they can take it um, and drop it off. So I definitely like to clean up my pieces before I um, do anything to them. Um, and originally I was going to paint this, but I then just ended up sanding down all the cherry parts or the stained parts, I should say, leaving that weaved part that woven part I should say in the middle um, I left that alone because we're going to paint that here in a minute but I do go in with my special walnut at first and I didn't like it it wasn't dark enough so I ended up going in with my Jacobian um, stain and giving that a good coat of that stain and then once I lay down the stain I pull it back up with a paper towel when you're staining anything, you want to let that dry really, really good or else you're going to make a mess all over your hands like I do because I'm impatient. I have no rust in my butt. <laughs> um, but anyway, I did let it dry for a good while. And then I went in with my White Waverly chalk paint and I painted that middle part. Once that paint was dry, then I go in with a mini chip brush and some antique wax and I distress it. I just wanted you to be able to see that part. I loved it so much that I wanted to accent it and you couldn't really tell the pattern with just the white paint. So I wanted to make sure that that stood out. Once I did that, then surprise, surprise, I distressed the little hooks as well as the entire shelf other than the middle part, obviously. Last but not least, I screw those hooks right back down, right where they were, and that was it for this project, you guys. I love flip, I love thrift flips because they are just so easy to do. Half of the work is already done for you, so I'm really enjoying do, doing these. You can let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy them too, or if I should just stick to Dollar Tree DIYs. But I am trying to give you guys a little bit of variety on my channel for a long time I just did Dollar Tree DIYs and I am enjoying doing something a little bit different. Okay guys, moving on to our second to last project. We got a little visitor, visitor here. Little Miss Bella just woke up, so she's right here in my lap if you hear her. But I take this coffee bar sign and I give it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was dry, then I go in with my calendar that I get from Dollar Tree. Don't worry, I do plan on doing a giveaway with these as well. That's what made me come up with the idea of doing small little giveaways because I just want to give back to you guys and I know that not everybody can get these hard to find items. So if I can help out in that way, then I would love to do that. So I pick out the calendar that I wanted and it was the June calendar of this barn. I then just lay it down on my sign and kind of just press down on the sides to see the indentation. And I cut a little bit outside of that. That way I know that it fits right. And then um, you'll see how we get it even here in a minute. But once again, I go in with my um, glue stick and I glue that down. Now, this probably would have worked better with Mod Podge, um, but you have to wet the paper and then Mod Podge it and then Mod Podge over it. And 
your girl ain't got time for that. So um, I did just use a glue stick. I mean, it still worked for me, but like I said, it, it probably would have worked a little bit better, but it is what it is. No harm, no foul. Um, but once I have it on my sign and I did let it dry for a couple minutes, I used my quick dry tool. Um, I cut down in between those slats with my utility knife and then I take my little mini zip sander that's linked in my Amazon favorites or in my Amazon store in my link tree once again. Um, I do just sand those edges off and I sand away from the front. Um, you're gonna get a nice clean edge that way. And then I also do sand the, I tried to sand the middle part is what I should say, but because it was kind of a tight squeeze, I did just go back in with my utility knife and I just cleaned up those middle edges as best as I could. Um, and then I do sand the edges pretty good because I wanted this to look old and weathered. And I do sand like the front in between those slats if that makes sense I just couldn't get down in between there um, so I hope that makes sense but you can see what I'm doing here and um, again I just wanted this to look like it was naturally placed onto this sign I'm sorry you guys Isabel is right here now she's playing with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> mom life right um, but then I take a little bit of greenery. I was just going to leave this sign as is, but I felt that it was missing a little something. So I do just take some greenery that uh, I got from a random pick. If greenery falls off of picks, I keep them in a big bin. That way, if I need just like a scrap piece, I can just root through that bin and get what I need. So I do just glue that down to the right hand side at the top. And then I also had this random cotton pick ball, whatever you want to call it from Dollar Tree. And normally I don't like these ones that are just like a ball. They're not like um, the regular cotton, but I thought that this looked really cute. So I did just glue that down right next to the greenery and then that was it for this one you guys i love the way that this sign turned out so let me know in the comments down below what you think Okay friends, so for the last project, I love this one so much. I just wanted to show you that these are all three of the different wood plaques that you can get from Dollar Tree, but I did go with this one that kind of had like curved edges to it and I give it a good coat of antique wax by Waverly. I never have done this before, but I actually really love the way that this looked. So I'll definitely be doing this again in the future. I have seen other DIYers do this, but I just personally never did. Um, but I'm glad that I tried it because I actually love it, like I said. And once I gave it a good coat, then I go in with my bigger sander and I just sand those edges down. And I love the effect that this gave. It looks old and weathered on the edges and it just looks really cool. I then take my little bird cage thing and I got these LED lamps. I had no idea that the silver ones have like a I don't even know what kind of light um, that you want to call it, but it it's like the brighter one and then the gold, um, t the gold, the ones with the gold top have like the warmer light. So I did end up going with that one. I um, took the tag off as well as the little part that um, makes it turn on and off. And I took a piece of floral wire and I just attached that to the middle of the inside. Next, I took this apple leaf garland that I got from Walmart. I've had this in my stash for quite a while and I thought that this would look really cool at the top. I didn't know if I would wrap it around or wrap it around that like top edge, but then I figured out that I could um, stick the end into it and have it kind of hang down um, every so often or 
I don't even know, like every, every couple inches around it. And I didn't do the back because you're not going to see the back, but I did just kind of stick it through and then cut it where I liked it. And then I did about six pieces like that. And then I went in with more of that random greenery that I have in my bin and I just kind of cut it down and stick it into the top just to make it a little bit more fuller. I didn't want you to be able to see the ends of the greenery. And then um, I took this plant hanger that I got from Dollar Tree and I wasn't too sure how I was going to attach this and in the end I ended up attaching it a totally different way than I put on camera because I didn't end up doing it until I had it hanging up. <laughs> but originally I kind of just shimmied this into the chicken wire and then I took these little um, wooden squares that I got from Dollar Tree and I just kind of hot glued them underneath this plant hook. That way, once the little bird cage was hanging, it would hang uh, nice and straight, not like flop to one side or the front or the back. Um, but again, I, I didn't end up keeping it this way. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of how I have it now first, but hey, I guess that's how it goes, right? And then I'm like, Melissa, what are you doing? You should have screwed this on first. <laughs> So if you guys find a bird cage and you do this, definitely screw your plant hook on there first. Um, so I had to kind of do this backwards and screw the plant hook to the plaque after I had it on the bird cage. And then literally you guys, that was it. But I did end up taking off the plant hook and the wooden cubes and I just took a piece of floral wire through the top of it and then you can kind of see it there and then I just hung it and it hung perfectly so anyway you guys I love this one so so much I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I do I loved the entire video and I really enjoyed doing these flips for you so let me know in the comments down below again which project was your favorite which flip was the best also don't forget to enter into the the giveaway and also at the end you'll see I'm I'm hosting an open challenge so if you're a creator and you want to join in on my challenge it's called the subscriber requested challenge so in the beginning of July in just a couple days I will ask you guys what you guys want to see from me I will choose what you want to see and then um, I will DIY it so anyway please be kind in the comments. My motto is you never know what kind of day somebody's having. They could be having a really crappy day and that rude comment could really just throw them over the edge. So I tell my kids all the time, just assume that everybody's having a bad day and then you'll treat everybody really good. And um, my five-year-old knows to give people compliments because you never know if that could make somebody's day. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, you guys don't want to miss another giveaway or you don't want to miss another Dollar Tree or Thrift Flip or even a haul moment. So make sure you do that. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely amazing and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.